What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Off the Top Rope show. This is a special edition. We talked about it before on our live show on Monday. This is a special episode. We're going to be giving our Royal Rumble bookings what we think should happen, not what we think will happen, what we think should happen. And it's going to be from number one to number 30. We're going to do the entire Royal Rumble match, how we would book it. And Matt, I mean, first of all, great job on that intro. I think that was sick myself. So good job. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, But I mean, we're a few days away from the Rumble, just two more days away from the Royal Rumble. How excited are you for this pay-per-view? I'm really hyped. I think, honestly, going through this and making my fantasy booking for the women's and the men's, uh, keeping things realistic, whereas also keeping things the way that I want to see them happen, the way that I know a lot of people want to see them happen, really hyped me up even more. Um, I'm getting excited for a lot of the rest of the card, too. I'm getting excited for the two championship matches. I'm also getting excited for the Becky versus Dewdrop fight and uh, the Miz and Maurice versus Edge and Beth Phoenix. I'm getting excited for all the matches, honestly. It's going to be a really, really, really fun night. Yeah, as I was making my bookings, I just, as I continued to go on and on, I just kept getting more and more excited for the show. The Royal Rumble, in my opinion, is the best show of the entire year for all professional wrestling. And we're just a few days away. And let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Um, so, Matt, we're going to start with your women's booking for the Royal Rumble. So, just start from the top, from number one. We'll go to number 30, and then we'll talk about it a little after. Yes, sir. So, um, for our viewers... I was the, I was the sole one who did the women's booking here um, just because I had a little bit of extra time in my hands and Justin was still working on his men's booking. So we're going to the way the show is going to work is we're going to go through my women's booking. Then we're going to get some feedback from Justin after. Then after that, we're going to see Justin's men's booking. I'm going to give him some feedback and we're going to end with my men's booking. and He's going to give me feedback and we'll wrap up the whole show. So let's just talk about before I start my um, booking. Let's just talk about what I think is going to happen in the undercard. I think Becky is going to beat Dewdrop. I don't think that's a question. But the thing is, is that Ronda Rousey is heavily rumored to be at the Royal Rumble. And for me, it'd be a cop out to include her in the Royal Rumble match. And also, quite frankly, she doesn't really need to be in it. I think her even showing up and challenging Becky right after that Dewdrop fight works. And I don't really know exactly how you would do that. I don't know if you'd have the Women's Royal Rumble go on before Becky versus Dewdrop and then having her appear after that because it would ruin all the hype for the Royal Rumble for the women's. But I think that's why I do just because I think it's a bit of a cop out to have Ronda Rousey win uh, the Women's Royal Rumble. So what do you think about that, Justin, before I can uh, start my booking? No, I honestly agree with that myself. Again, although I didn't have the opportunity to book this Women's Royal Rumble, I, I don't think Ronda Rousey uh, should win. I think it should be either Bianca Belair or Liv Morgan or potentially a returning Bailey or Oscar. I think it should be one of those four, definitely. And really just, I mean, she hasn't been in the scene for a while, and she has enough star power to just go and challenge Becky Lynch right away. She doesn't have to win the Royal Rumble for that. You give that to someone else. She has the star power to just challenge her right away and get the match right away, the Raw after, set up that WrestleMania match. I think that's the perfect way to do it. I don't think she should win. I don't think she should win it, uh, be in it either. So, yeah, I completely agree with that myself. All right. So let's talk about my women's Royal Rumble booking. So entering at number one, and I think this is kind of a consensus for a lot of people. It's Charlotte Flair. And for me, I just flash back to the 2020 Royal Rumble, men's Royal Rumble, which was probably the best Royal Rumble in recent memory. Having Brock Lesnar enter at number one and the storyline that caused for the person who eliminated him was huge. And there's going to be kind of a similar tone here. I'd say the themes for this Women's Royal Rumble booking is there's going to be a lot of callbacks, but there's also going to be a lot of setting up for the future. And it's all going to be about just callbacks here. I think there's going to be some development of new talent, but this is going to be a lot of storyline based stuff, which is really good as usual in the Royal Rumble, because entrant number two is Rhea Ripley. And I think Rhea Ripley didn't really get a fair shake after she lost the women's championship to Charlotte. And then the weird thing with Asuka. And then they had the weird match with Nikki A.S.H. And the whole, uh, you know, tag team championship stuff. And now she's kind of separated from Nikki A.S.H. I think a very easy way to get the heat back for her is to get her to show off uh, for like 90 seconds, uh, two minutes to start off the women's Royal Rumble with Charlotte. I think it makes the most sense. Um these two just feel like perennial rivals right now. It really feels like the old guard versus the new guard. And I really think that Charlotte and Rhea Ripley are really capable of starting off a really good technical women's Royal Rumble. Um, you think back to the matches they had in NXT for the NXT Women's Championship, and then the clock starts counting down, and entrant number three is Io Shirai. And I think this is the one that makes the most sense. I have a few surprise entrants from NXT, 
on this uh, list, on this um, predictions. And I think that Io Shirai makes the most sense to enter early. Um, she's someone that hasn't really been on NXT TV recently, and I'm kind of worried for that because that's a whole indicator of NXT 2.0 wanting to focus on younger talent and developmental talent. Uh, Io Shirai is going to be on the women's main roster very soon. It's very clear she's very capable, probably the most talented woman on the roster in ring. Um, she's fierce, intense. Her aerial stunts are out of this world. Her Asai moonsault is insane. Um, her heel character is great. And I, you know, she has shared history with Charlotte Flair and with Rhea Ripley. Obviously, they had that great triple threat in NXT that Io Shirai beat Charlotte Flair for the women's uh, championship in. Now, we're going basically on continuing storylines, continuing things that happen, continuing connections here. You have the three of these people, uh, three wins wrestlers in the ring in a stalemate. They're all standing in a fighting stance, and then they nod heads at each other and agree to take on the fourth person who comes down to the ring. Clock ticks down. Number four is a returning Oscar. And it's because you want to start the Women's Royal Rumble with a bang. And there's not much more of a bang you can do than adding Asuka in here early. Because all four of these women are conceivable people who could be Iron Women. One thing that I don't really like about modern day Royal Rumble booking is they'll only have two Iron Men at the beginning. And then you'll have a bunch of people going through very quickly, which usually works. But at the same time, it kind of brings out like, you know, there's, there's not really a continued storyline because the Royal Rumble match itself is a storyline. You know, there's a lot of fighting within and having Asuka come back. You know, she has history with Charlotte Flair. She has history with Io Shirai. She has history with Rhea Ripley. There's so much history in all those matchups. And once again, you could easily have Rhea Ripley, Asuka, and um, Io Shirai going against Charlotte. We're going back to more history because at number five, it's Dana Brooke. And if you remember back to originally when the brand split, Dana Brooke was the assistant or tag team partner or whatever of Charlotte Flair. Um, she was her heavy when Ric Flair stepped away. She took over for him after the whole Dana Brooke and Emma experiment didn't really work. Um, she's someone who I think is really underutilized on this roster and it's kind of unfortunate. I think definitely what happens here is she runs in and they have a whole callback to, oh, Dana Brooke used to be alive with Charlotte. This makes a lot of sense. You know, Dana Brooke gets in there, tries to defend Charlotte, goes nowhere. Um, Oscar comes in, hits her with a big kick or something like that, tosses her over the top rope. Dana Brooke is the first woman eliminated. Um, keep a lot of these eliminations in mind. They're going to come back later. Because number eight, number six is Carmella. And Carmella is someone who she's the current women's tag team champion with Zelina Vega. But Carmella gets in. She hits a few super kicks. Um, she gets floored by Asuka. Asuka hits her with an Asuka lock. But Carmella rolls under the bottom rope. It's still a stalemate. There's still four women in the ring. And Carmella's out on the outside passed out. And who comes in but Natalia at number seven. And I think Natalia is someone who... You know, she's been in a uh, workhorse for the women's division. She's one of the main people who kind of got the women's division started, honestly, who got it kind of ramping up. Um, she was huge for the re revitalization. I don't think she's someone that they can really build this match around, obviously. And I think that she's kind of gotten stale in the last few years. So let's give her an interesting angle. Um, because if you remember on the last episode of SmackDown, Summer Ray was in the crowd and Summer Ray and Natalia had a standoff and they were looking at each other and Natalia and Summer Ray have history from Total Divas. So my whole thought is here, have Natalia come in, have Natalia flatten everyone, have Summer Ray come in, have Natalia mock her, knock her down, and then have Natalia showboat to the crowd, get on the second rope, do the whole weird hey pose she does, and then get thrown over by Summer Ray in a freaking elimination. And I think Natalia should be the second woman now eliminated by Summer Rae. Summer Rae showboats, and then Io Shirai hits her with a drop kick, and she gets sailed over the top rope. So Summer Rae and Natalia are out. Once again, it's back to our original floor four. It's Charlotte Flair. It's Rhea Ripley. It's Io Shirai, and it's Asuka. And Carmella is still on the outside, passed out. Keep in mind. Number nine is Aaliyah. Aaliyah gets in, eliminate, immediately eliminated with a big boot by Rhea Ripley. Because I think they need to have that set. I think they need to have something like a Santino Morella moment set. I don't think Aaliyah really has anything behind her right now. I think even in a NXT, there wasn't a huge push behind her. They kind of brought her up. She's been in developmental for a very long time. They thought the test her on the main roster. So why not start a character with her where, oh, I got wronged. I stepped in the Royal Rumble for three seconds and got eliminated. Set the new record for the shortest amount of time in a women's Royal Rumble. And now I'm out. 
So I think Aaliyah makes the most sense here. I think Rhea Ripley should absolutely get an elimination here. And just keep in mind, you have um, four workhorse women in the ring right now. So we still have that core four. We still have Charlotte, we have Rhea, we have Io, and we have Asuka. But that's all about to change because at number 10 is Bianca Belair. And I think Bianca comes in like a house of fire. I think you call back to her and Io Shirai's history in NXT. Io Shirai is on the top rope trying to hit an Asai moonsault on, let's say, a prone Rhea Ripley. Bianca jumps over, pushes her over the top rope. Io Shirai has been eliminated. And it's just a back and forth, absolutely rambunctious back and forth between the four women who are in the ring. It's that original 3M Bianca replacing Io. And you still have Carmella outside. You need to remember this whole time, Carmella is still passed out outside of the ring. So now we go into it with number 11, and it's Naomi. I think this makes sense. Naomi gets in here for, you know, a uh, good pop. Everyone loves Naomi. She comes in, hits a bunch of real reviews, hits the really cool split-legged Starship Pain-style moonsault. Um, she trades blows with Charlotte because there's also history there. She trades blows with v Bianca, and there's a recall at a last Women's Royal Rumble match where they had a few saves on each other. Um, there's a lot of story history here. I think there's a lot you can do with Naomi in this match. I don't think she's going to make a huge impact in it, but I think let's just let her do her stuff. You know, she's also got an interesting storyline going on right now, and that's where you lead into number 12 with Shayna Baszler. And Shayna Baszler is someone who I think is criminally underrated. I think you let her get in. I think the first thing you do is you have Shayna face off with Asuka because believe it or not, that's not a match that's happened on the main roster, I don't believe. I don't believe that match has ever happened. Maybe the Kabuki Warriors versus uh, Shayna and Nia, but that singles match, I don't believe, has ever happened on a big stage, and that's one that needs to happen. I think you have them uh, face off. I think you have Shayna run roughshod. I think she hits a Kirifuda clutch on a few people. Um, she's standing around with Naomi. Naomi's in a Kirifuda clutch. However, Naomi somehow reverses it, and eliminate Shayna. And I know that sounds kind of weird because her being eliminated within 90 seconds sounds like a burial, but trust me, you're going to appreciate what happens next. So Shayna is on the outside. She's upset. She pulls Naomi under the ropes. She picks her up. She slams her on the announce table. Naomi's passed out on the table. Keep in mind, she went under the bottom rope, so she has not touched the floor and she could still walk on the floor and go back into the ring. Also, Carmella is still passed out outside of the ring. So in the ring right now, I believe it's still Charlotte, it's Bianca, it's Rhea, and it is number four, who is Asuka. So that's your core four who's in the ring right now. Number 13 is Alexa Bliss. And I think Alexa Bliss is someone who's been teasing a return recently. It makes sense for her to return here. I think she should absolutely just be a house of fire on everyone. I don't think she needs to eliminate anyone yet. But have a return. She's kind of towing the line right now between being that supernatural gimmick and her old five feet of fury goddess gimmick. I think she should go back to that one. But let's just kind of stick with the in between here. Had her come out at entrance 13 because WWE can't resist having spooky characters come out at entrance 13. So we have Alexa Bliss out here. Now, number 14 is where it gets interesting because number 14 is Nikki A.S.H. And Nikki A.S.H. runs in the ring, immediately met with a big boot by Rhea Ripley. She goes to toss her out, but Nikki A.S.H. uses some underhanded tactics and gets Rhea Ripley out. So Rhea Ripley has been eliminated by her former tag team partner, Nikki A.S.H., because there's that whole feud going on. Now, Nikki A.S.H. is in the ring. She sees Alexa Bliss. You have the recall to Bliss Cross and that whole tag team and what happened when they won the titles at WrestleMania. I believe it was 36. So there's a good bit of history there. Um, Remember, Bliss is still towing the line between being someone that hypnotizes people and being someone that um, is the old goddess character. So have them team up on a few people and then Nikki A.S.H. is back as turned and Alexa eliminates her. So I think that makes sense. So Nikki A.S.H. is out. Rhea Ripley is out. So the people in the ring right now to remind everyone is Charlotte. It's Bianca. It's Asuka. It's Alexa Bliss. So those are the four in the ring. Outside, you have Carmella passed out. Outside, you have Naomi passed out. But Naomi is stirring, and Naomi is about to walk back into the ring because number 15 is Kelly Kelly. And Kelly Kelly is someone who I, I don't think they're going to get much out of her. I think she should just be an in-and-out person. Have her go in the ring. Have her... Um, I don't even know what her signature move is. I think it's a head-scissors takedown. Have her do that. 
um, have Naomi hit her with a rear view and then have Charlotte um, hit Naomi with a big boot, have Naomi be out on the ground, but then have Charlotte focus on Kelly Kelly, have Charlotte eliminate Kelly Kelly, and then have Naomi do some, I'm not going to predict what her crazy spot's going to be, but I think this should be the moment when you do that crazy spot. Uh, it makes the most sense because at entrant number 16, it's Sonya Deville. And that's the storyline that's been going on on SmackDown. It's been Naomi's being treated crappily by Sonya and Shayna. Um, Justin, if you could turn your mic on, I'm just trying to remember, is that still a storyline that's ongoing or did they drop it? It's still ongoing, I believe. But uh, they had Naomi, I believe, wrestle a match at either last SmackDown or the SmackDown before that. But I still be, I believe it's ongoing 100%. Okay. okay. So um, the callback here is Sonya Deville um comes into the ring but um she's not looking for anyone but naomi her whole purpose in this match is to eliminate naomi so sonya deville stares at naomi naomi stares back at her you can hear see her mouth oh hell no then out of nowhere Shayna baszler is back she throws her in the curfew to clutch uh chokes out naomi naomi is picked up by both baszler and deville and is eliminated and i think this makes the most sense you have naomi eliminated now sonya stands strong uh, Shayna decides to go to the back because it's revealed on a later SmackDown that Sonya has been paying Shayna off and it's going to lead to a Sonya and Naomi match mania. So I think this is what makes the most sense. Um, Sonya eliminates Naomi. So entrant number 17 is Liv Morgan. And Liv Morgan comes in like a house of fire. Liv Morgan is hitting everyone with crazy moves. Um, she's doing I really want to see her do that springboard um, sunset flip power bomb. Whatever that was, I want to see her do it. I don't know if it'll be on Charlotte Flair or Bianca. Um, there should absolutely be a stare down between Liv Morgan and Bianca because it's been kind of a one-upsmanship on Raw contests recently. Just of these two are both two of the best on the brand and they're both young talent and they're both going to be the future of this division. There's a lot of history there. However, keep in mind there hasn't been a few eliminations for a while and that's because entrant number 18 is Michelle McCool. Michelle McCool comes in. Every single woman stares at her and they call back to the 2018 women's Royal rumble where for no reason she eliminated five women and was the highest was the woman with the highest elimination count in the match. They stare at her. She stares back. They all beat the crap out of her. And then Charlotte eliminates her with a big boot. The purpose of a lot of these legends is going to be putting over younger talent. And I think that's the way they should be used in this match. So Michelle McCool lasts a cool 40 seconds and is eliminated with a big boot by Charlotte. However, Right after this, Alexa Bliss is hit with a move by like Liv Morgan, and Liv Morgan eliminates Alexa Bliss. I think that this is what makes the most sense. Liv Morgan showboats, looks over the top rope, Alexa glares at her, and out of nowhere, Bianca Belair eliminates Liv Morgan. So keep in mind, the two things that this does, it keeps the Bianca and Liv rivalry going, and it also creates a new rivalry between Bliss and Liv. And I think it makes the most sense to do a potential mania program between Bliss and Liv. I think they're two very similar talents. They're both short blonde women who are very talented with gymnastics, flips, etc. You know, you saw the Sunset Flip power bomb. I think there's a lot of similarities in their careers, and I think that'd be a really good feud to see. So... Alexa Bliss has been eliminated by Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan has been eliminated with Bianca Belair. And then number 19 comes out, and it's Mandy Rose, the NXT Women's Champion. And she comes down to the ring. She gets in the ring. And there's a stare down. Because it's Mandy Rose, and it's Sonya Deville. And there's so much history there. And then they start beating the crap out of each other. The crowd will pop because there was a huge program a few years ago. Um, Sonya and Mandy was one of the most underrated feuds of the year back in 2020, I believe. So that's something that I think the crowd will pop for. I think it'd be really nice. Um, they're still fighting and they're coming to blows. And then number 20 comes out and it's the return of Paige and Paige, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville were part of absolution, a very short lived women's stable back in 2018, 2017. And I think this would be the perfect way to return Paige. Even if it's for a limited role, I think Paige comes down to the ring. She instantly gets Mandy and Sonya to stop fighting. And then they look at uh, they look at Paige. They look at each other and they all embrace. And Absolution is back. Paige turns around. She stares straight at Asuka. Asuka is up staring at her. Asuka and Paige. Paige was the manager for the Kabuki Warriors. 
Asuka's conflicted. Paige is like, oh, no, 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 we're still on the same side. Asuka immediately starts hitting Paige, and Sonya and Mandy run in to hit, uh, hit Asuka back. Um, they're all brawling. Paige is brawling with Mandy Rose and Sonya. Mandy and Sonya get up from beating up Asuka. They strike poses. They're celebrating, and Paige eliminates the both of them immediately. And I think it makes the most sense. Mandy and Sonya could have shocked expressions looking at Paige. Paige can throw up her hands just saying, got to do what I got to do. Paige turns around immediately into a big boot by Charlotte Flair. Because Paige and Charlotte have history, and Paige delivered one of the worst lines in professional wrestling history to her about her younger brother passing away from a drug overdose. And I think this would be a really good way to reintroduce that feud. Paige is picked up by Charlotte, promptly eliminated. 21 is Mickey James. Because there's a lull in the match. Charlotte's left standing in the ring. She's asking who's next. Mickey James comes down. They give her a whole thing about the TNA Knockouts Champion, which I think is a really good idea. I think it's a really nice way of cross-promoting. Um, Mickey James is down in the ring. Her and Charlotte start delivering blows to each other. Um, her and Asuka face off. And her and Asuka have a lot of history because, remember, her and Asuka had a match at NXT TakeOver Toronto a few years ago. Asuka and her start deli uh, delivering kicks to each other. They're both passed out. She slowly gets to her feet. And now the people who are in the ring right now are Charlotte. They are Asuka and they are Bianca Belair. And it's Mickey James. Who comes out next? But Lita. Because Lita has history with Charlotte Flair. And it just leads to a stare down. Charlotte says, Oh, it's three on two. You can't beat us. You're the old generation. We're the new generation. Woo! 10, 9, 8, 7, so on. Builds down. Entrant number 23 is Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus comes in the ring, and they all stare down. And it's the old guard versus the new guard. It's Trish, Mickey, and Lita. And it's Charlotte, Bianca, and Asuka. And they stare at each other. And they immediately start delivering blows. They're fighting. They're screaming. All of them are clawing at each other. Um, they're furious. You know, it's intense. It's a perfect way of building over the new talent that you have here. And entrant number 24, when everyone's lying on the ground, is Queen Zelina Vega. Zelina comes down to the ring. Before getting in, she notices her partner Carmella on the outside. She talks to Carmella. Are you ready to go in? Carmella says yes. Carmella and Zelina enter the ring and they immediately try eliminating everyone. But since they're so small, they can't pick anyone up. Trish and Lita get to their feet because I want to see this feud and I want to see this feud at WrestleMania for the women's tag team titles. I want to see Trish and Lita versus Zelina and Carmella. Immediately, Carmella is eliminated by Trish Stratus. Zelina Vig eliminated by Lita. And then right after that, Lita turns around into a big boot from Charlotte, and Lita is out. Lita is eliminated by Charlotte Flair to continue that feud. Mickey James gets to her feet slowly. Oscar throws her in the Oscar lock. Oscar throws her passed out body on the floor. Mickey James is out. Trish Stratus puts up as good a fight as she can against three women, but Bianca Belair comes in, hits the KOD on her, and then eliminates her. So we're back to that core three. We're back to Bianca. We're back to Charlotte. And we're back to Asuka. Entrant number 25 is Shotzi. Shotzi enters the ring. Shotzi is immediately hair whipped by Bianca and big booted by Charlotte. And they just all take out their aggression on her because they're just fed up with those. Those three have been in the ring for forever. They're fed up with fighting new people. They beat the crap out of her and they toss her out. So Shotzi is eliminated by Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte at this point has, I believe... Uh, five eliminations. So she's leading the match in eliminations. 26 comes out. That's Tamina. And ain't no muddy Mina than Tamina. So Tamina comes in the ring, hits a few big boots. They're all passed out except Tamina. The announcers are bringing up, who can eliminate Tamina? She's the biggest one here, even though she's really not that much bigger than the rest of them. And it's counting down. Entrant number 27, Raquel Gonzalez from NXT. Because she's going to be called up soon. You might as well call her up in the Rumble. Because her whole thing is she beats the crap out of women. And she's a badass. Raquel Gonzalez comes down to the ring. Immediately plants Tamina. Beats the crap out of Tamina. Chucks her out of the ring. She starts beating the crap out of every single woman lying in that ring. It doesn't matter. They're all lying on the ground. 
She's gesturing to the back. Come on, come down. Who's coming next? Who's coming next? 28, Brie Bella. Brie Bella comes in, but then she stops halfway down the ramp. Then she turns around, asks someone for a mic. Then she gets on the mic and says, I don't know if this is allowed, but can we please have the next entrant come out soon? Clock starts counting down. They, for some reason, grant her request. Raquel is standing with a strange expression on her face. Counts down to zero. Nikki Bella is 29. So the Bella twins walk down to the ring. They see Raquel Gonzalez standing there. She's a rookie. They think, oh, we can get the best of her. They run in into an immediate double clothesline from Raquel Gonzalez. And Raquel Gonzalez eliminates both of them. Not immediately because, you know, they're big fan favorites. So I wouldn't do that because that'll bury her character right away. However, it should be pretty quick um, before the next entrant. And before the next entrant, Oscar throws Raquel Gonzalez into the Oscar lock. She passes out. Oscar eliminates her with some help from Bianca. And once again, it's Charlotte, it's Oscar, and it's Bianca in a stalemate, sitting in three corners, counting down. Entrant number 30 is Bailey. Because it has to be Bailey. Because Bailey has been sorely missed in the women's division for the last year. Ever since tearing her ACL, she was a huge, 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 huge star for the women's division over the pandemic in the Thunderdome. She was the MVP overall, not just in the women's division, in the Thunderdome. She was the MVP. Her character work was insane. She got super over with everyone everywhere. She had classic matches with everyone. She comes down to the ring. And just the three of them stand up. And all four of them look at each other. And all four of them have history with each other. Because Bailey has history with Oscar from NXT. She has history with Bianca from last year's feud. She was eliminated from the Royal Rumble by Bianca. She has history with Charlotte from the early days of Raw and the brand split. And then Oscar has history with the other three. Everyone has history with each other. They all stare at each other and they all start throwing fists. But the way it works is it's Oscar, it's Bailey, and it's Charlotte throwing fists at Bianca. Because they turn to her and they realize that she's probably the biggest threat there. Because even though Bailey is new, Bianca has always found a way to win. So they beat the crap out of uh, Bianca. She's lying on the ground. Charlotte showboats, goes over to the ropes, and Bailey eliminates her. Charlotte is eliminated from the Women's Royal Rumble. She looks up in shock. Bailey sneers, shrugs, and then flashes the four horsewomen sign. She turns around, bang, immediately into a kick from Asuka, put in the Asuka lock. Now, Bailey is struggling to breathe. She's trying to get out of this. It's not really working. However, out of nowhere, Bianca comes comes in, whips Asuka with her hair. Asuka freaks out, stands up, is hurt. Bianca hits her again with the KOD, eliminates her. Asuka is eliminated for the Women's Royal Rumble. She glares at Bianca and then begrudgingly walks up the ramp. And it's down to two. It's Bianca and it's Bailey. I just realized I have this down here. So Bianca and Bailey are looking at each other in the ring. And there's so much history between these two. They were the stars of um, some of the last few months of television before Bailey got injured. There was history. Bianca eliminated Bailey. However, they start trading blows. And Bianca out of nowhere starts doing some heel tactics. She starts trying to claw at Bailey's face. She starts trying to sweep her feet, do a lot of, you know, tries to get out of the ring under the bottom ropes. And Bianca eventually has her in the KOD. Bailey gets out of it, hits her with a Bailey to belly, throws Bianca over the top rope, but Bianca reverses, brings her back in for some reason. And Bianca and Bailey are just looking at each other. Bianca goes to throw Bailey over. Bailey catches onto Bianca's hair. And it's a match of Bianca with her hair hanging over the top rope, being held by Bailey, and Bailey trying to slide slowly under the bottom rope with her hair. And eventually Bailey does. Throws Bianca over, and Bailey is your winner of the Women's Royal Rumble. Now, the reason why I did this before you talk about it, Justin, and just your thoughts on it, there's a lot of things this does. For example, I think the number one thing is it sets up a Charlotte Flair and Bailey fight for WrestleMania. I think that's a match that a lot of people want to see because Charlotte, a lot of people have gotten sick of. Bailey is super over, and people have missed her sorely. And also, it's an easy way to reinsert Sh Sasha into that if you want to do a triple threat, because people are always open for that triple threat to happen. Also, it does wonders because Asuka and Bianca can face off in WrestleMania. 
Um, they can, there's a lot that they can do together, but I think the most important thing this does is it shows the first few flashes of Bianca's heel character because before, you know, now we're, you know, it won't be soon before long that Bianca turns heel. And I think it should happen soon after WrestleMania because once Bailey wins the belt, Bailey should be kind of an anti-hero face and Bianca should be a heel chasing that belt. So that's why I think it does establishing it. Uh, I want to hear what your thoughts are on this, Justin. I think this was probably the best way that they could do the women's Royal rumble. Just, I mean, first of all, the, one of the things I liked a lot was that it's set up that Sonia Deville versus Naomi feud for WrestleMania. And that's a feud that's been really brewing for a very long time. And it's been sort of built long-term. So having it really come full fledged here and just uh, fully built towards WrestleMania, just fully fledged. I think that's the perfect way to do it. That was one of my favorite parts about this match just setting up that feud um, because I mean, there has to be some sort of payoff, right? So I think that's the perfect way to set up a match at WrestleMania. I also like, although I did uh, want Liv Morgan to win this Royal Rumble, I do think she should be one of the contenders to win it. I do like the fact that she should uh, she'll be going into a feud with Alexa Bliss in this world because, I, I, as you said, I mean they're both two very similar performers and very similar uh, similar talents. So that's something I would like to see a lot as well, and. I really liked, because I sort of did this with my men's Royal Rumble, which we'll get into in a little bit. I, I liked how you kept it really grounded and just surrounded by, or really surrounded by, actually, that's the right word to put it, surrounded by a, a, a few performers and a few women. It's really just centered around a few people like Bianca Belair, like Charlotte, like Bailey towards the end, like Asuka. It's really just surrounded by them and built around them, and then you have side storylines going on that don't get, uh, don't get in the way of, the main storyline, which is who's going to win this rumble between the big stars. And that's sort of how I did my men's Royal rumble, which we'll get to. But in terms of your pick for Bailey, I really like that one a lot. I think if she returns, she probably should win the Royal rumble. I think she should transition into a face. And especially if she's going against Charlotte, she should be a face, but I think regardless, she should trans uh, transition into a face once she returns. And Putting her against Charlotte, someone that no one really likes. I mean, not not doesn't like, but a lot of people are sick of. I, I think that's the best way to do it because then, obviously, I mean, regardless, Bailey's going to get love, but having her against Charlotte at, at WrestleMania and really in that sense, she's going to get as much love as possible. So I like that a lot, and I like that pick. Um, and I also do like the fact that you're setting up Bianca Belair to turn heel. Eventually down the road, I do see her turning heel and potentially forming a faction with the Street Profits. Uh, a real heel stable uh, for Monday Night Raw. And I think that's the perfect way to plant the seeds. And I think it should be, sl those seeds should be slowly planted. And then after WrestleMania sometime, uh, right after or a few months after, it completely blows up and she turns heel fully. So overall, I like the structure of this match a lot. It's just, again, it's really grounded by a few people, uh, a few of the few main stars, and then just everyone else on the side, still building side storylines, still doing all that, uh, all that stuff. So I really enjoyed that as well. My, If I were to give a really, really quick, tiny booking, I would probably say that I'm not, I, I keep going back and forth on who I think should win this Rumble. I think it will be Ronda Rousey, as we kind of talked about in the beginning. Yeah, this whole booking was made in anticipation, the fact that everyone's dreams are going to be crushed when Ronda's music hits at 30. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I booked it the way I did. I was just like, I, I can't have this happen. Like this yeah. For, for one bit of sanity, I really don't want to see this happen. I just think it'll destroy the whole purpose of the match. And I think that that'd be huge. But what do you think about like the winner other than Ronda? I think I think Bailey's if she's there, should be the pick to win. It's just there's a, a lot of a lot of people in that match I think should win as well. Like Liv Morgan, I'd like to see win. Asuka. Uh really those are the top three. And I just think one of those three should win. I, I would probably go with Bailey as well. I think your booking was, for the most part, flawless. And uh, another thing I liked, too, was the the Bell Twins thing. I, I really liked that one a lot when they got eliminated at the same time. But as a whole, I really I thought it was, for the most part, flawless. So I really enjoyed that one. Awesome. But now we could get into the men's Royal Rumble matches. And we will start with mine. And... The first entrant is Sami Zayn, and Sami Zayn does that whole typical thing where the heel, the first entrant of the Rumble, comes down with a microphone and starts talking smack and starts being like, I'm going to eliminate everyone here. And he gets into his conspiracy, and 
oh, it's a conspiracy. They had me in at number one, all that. I'll go into a quick three to five minute promo just to set up this match and just to get heat on his back. Cause I mean, if he, if he cuts a five minute promo before the match, no one's going to really want to see him win. So I, I'd have him cut a relatively long promo to start off this match. And after that comes number two and it's Goldberg. And I know not a lot of people like Goldberg, not a lot of people want to see Goldberg come back, but I think, he still has a little bit more left in the tank. I mean, obviously, he's been unsafe in the ring in the past, but he's still a big name. He's still a big draw, and he still brings that big fight feel to whatever match he's in. Obviously, he shouldn't be in the title picture again. He shouldn't be facing Big E for the title or Bobby Lashley or Seth Rollins or whoever wins the title. Goldberg should probably just have some singles matches for now on, and Right after the Goldberg comes, he completely decimates Sami Zayn to start, and Sami Zayn is the first one eliminated from the Royal Rumble. And then number three comes in, and it's The Miz. And The Miz, to get into our first undercard match that I'll sort of explain, because I'm going to just explain them throughout the Rumble. Um, The Miz, in the big tag team match uh, with Beth Phoenix and with Maurice um, and Edge, uh, obviously Edge and Beth Phoenix win this match. And I want to have a spot where, the Miz gets speared into a barricade towards the end of the match. And the Miz walks down to the ring and crutches. And he's saying, I think it's unfair that I have to be put in this Royal Rumble at all, let alone third in the whole match. I am the main event. I am the A-lister. They should just put me in the main event of WrestleMania right now. I main have been in more WrestleMania than Bill Goldberg. I don't need to be in this match. I think it's unfair after I had that match and got speared into that barricade unrightfully. And then he walks in the ring with his crutches. Him and Bill Goldberg have a stare down and he tries to hit Bill Goldberg with his crutches and he just doesn't move. He tries with his first crutch. He doesn't move. He tries with the second one. He doesn't move. The Miz goes under the bottom rope. Goldberg goes under the bottom rope. The Miz is running away from him. The Miz turns around near the barricade and Goldberg spears him into another barricade on the night, throws the Miz back in the ring, takes him out right away. Goldberg is still the only one standing in this match. And then comes number four. It's Madcap Moss. And, Matt Cat Moss walks into the ring and sort of just stares at Goldberg, starts laughing, and Goldberg is confused. And then out of nowhere comes Baron Corbin from the back, and he hits Goldberg in the back of the head with a black briefcase. And they just start beating up on Goldberg right away. And it's really just a two-on-one attack. And then the fifth entrant is Baron Corbin, and he's already in the ring. So they look at each other and they laugh. Baron Corbin opens the briefcase. A whole bunch of $100 bills, spills it all on Goldberg. They start laughing uh, laughing constantly throughout this whole time. They don't even touch Goldberg. They just continue to laugh. And then comes number six is Big E. And Big E runs into the match. He stares down with Rick Boogs. Um, excuse me, not Rick Boogs. Uh, Madcap Moss and Baron Corbin. It's a two-on-one right now with Goldberg still down. And Big E eventually eliminates Rick Boogs, and then Goldberg gets up, spears Baron Corbin, and eliminates him. So Big E eliminates Rick Boogs, Goldberg eliminates Corbin, and then that sets up Bill Goldberg versus Big E, just them two in the ring right now. But they don't fight. They they just stare down, and 10 seconds goes by, and then number seven is Johnny Knoxville. And Johnny Knoxville walks into the ring, and he, you could tell he's scared, but he's trying to play it off as if he's not. And then Goldberg just hits him with the spear, but Goldberg just looks at him. Big E just looks at him on the ground. They look at each other. And they're like, eh, it's Johnny Knoxville. Why should we just take him out right away? So they, they just keep him in the ring. And Big E and Goldberg start to fight. And Big E gets the upper hand here. But it's not really by much. It's just a little tease of a match that's soon to come. Not at WrestleMania. I have a different match for Goldberg, which we'll set up in this Rumble. But they start to set it up slightly. And Johnny Knoxville, uh, Knoxville is still on the floor. And then comes number eight which is Sheamus. And when Sheamus is walking to the ring, Goldberg and Big E know, okay, he's the heel. We, we got to go after him first before we continue our fight. So they stop fighting. They get off each other. And then Johnny Knoxville starts to get up. Sheamus walks in the ring. Sheamus is staring at both Goldberg and Big E. Johnny Knoxville fully gets up. Sheamus just bro kicks him then sends him out of the ring. Johnny Knoxville is eliminated by Sheamus. And then you start to see Sheamus, he gives a bro kick to Big E, he gives a uh, bro kick to Goldberg, and then comes number nine, which is Dolph Ziggler, another heel to throw in this. 
And Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler work together to have the upper hands against the face. And then comes number 10, which is Ziggler's tag team partner, Bobby Roode. It's a three versus two. They have the upper hand right now against Goldberg and Big E. And then the countdown starts. And then it ends. And no theme song plays for a few seconds. And then it goes completely dark. And then you hear another countdown, a similar one from what we've heard in years past. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The lights are still out. You don't hear any themes. And then you see the light up jacket and you hear Chris Jericho's theme song. I would love to play Judas, but I, I think there's just too good of a way to put it. Chris Jericho is the forbidden door entrant. And personally, I don't think there's going to be one in the men's Royal Rumble. I think those are just rumors stirred up. And if there is, I don't see it being Jericho. But if there is, I think Jericho is realistic at the very least. And if they want to get a big name from AEW or Impact, the most realistic one is Chris Jericho because he's still on good terms with the company. So I think he's the most realistic big name to make a Forbidden Door appearance. And Chris Jericho's in the Rumble, and right away, he eliminates Bobby Roode and he eliminates Ziggler. He gives uh, a code breaker to Sheamus. And then uh, he starts getting into it with Big E and Goldberg, and he's finally back in WWE. It's the biggest pop of the night. And then comes the next entrant. Oh, he obviously he eliminates uh, Ziggler and Rude. Then comes the next entrant, though. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens comes in the Royal Rumble match, has a stare down with Chris Jericho. That was his final real feud in WWE, Chris Jericho. And it was one of the best feuds I've ever witnessed as a fan that I've ever watched and seen. Kevin Owens comes in the match. They just stare down. And right away, they start brawling. And they continue to go at it throughout. And then comes the next entrance, which is just, it's Montez Ford. He comes in the match. He's going to have some solid spots when he gets in the match. He's going to bring some energy to it. And then comes the next one, Shinsuke Nakamura. This is where we're starting to fill up the ring with some more mid-carders. But there are a few eliminations that we're going to have right here. Sheamus will eliminate Goldberg from this match with a bro kick. But then right after with his back turned, he gets eliminated by Big E. And outside of the ring, something to keep in mind. Goldberg spears Sheamus right away, and Goldberg looks down on him. He's getting pissed. He hits him with his, uh, the steel chairs. He gets a table from under the ring and sets it up and goes for the jackhammer, but Sheamus breaks off of it right away and then hits a bro kick on him, and then they start brawling into the crowd after that, and then they go off into the crowd, and that sets up a WrestleMania match between Sheamus and Goldberg. It's not nothing really big for Goldberg to do, which is probably what a lot of people would want, but I think Sheamus is a guy that – doesn't really have anything set for WrestleMania right now. And Goldberg is a good person to put him against for a good five to 10 minute match. So I'm going to set up that feud in this one and keep in mind for later, that table is still outside of the ring in front of the entrance. So keep that in mind for later. We'll get to that in a second. When entrant number 15 comes Otis and Otis just lays waste to Big E right away. They stare down and then Otis plants him and he starts to get momentum. And then right after that is his tag team partner at number 16. Chad Gable, the tag team champions, they work together to uh, get to, get it to their advantage. Again, we're trying to fill up the ring with a lot of mid-carters here, just try and get a big pool of guys in this Rumble right now. And then number 17 is Matt Riddle. And Matt Riddle, right away, it's a two-on-one. Orton is in the, isn't in the match just yet. It's a two-on-one with him versus Otis and Chad Gable. Obviously, that's the tag team title feud on Raw that's going on right now. And at first, he starts to get beat down, but then he gains momentum. and then. He eliminates both of them. He eliminates both of them, and it makes him look strong because although they are the tag team champions right now and they did win that title match against Orton and Riddle, uh, you want to make Matt Riddle look strong in this match, and especially with an upcoming feud against Randy Orton at WrestleMania most likely, you want to continue to make him look strong before that feud. So he eliminates both of the tag team champions at once. And then comes at 18, Akira Tozawa. And Tozawa, at this time, we could say is the 24-7 champion, and he runs into the ring and right away gets thrown up into a pop-up powerbomb by Kevin Owens and thrown out of the ring into that table that was set up earlier, thrown completely out of the ring just through that table by Kevin Owens, and Tozawa is just eliminated right away. And then you have all the 24-7 guys come down to the ring, everyone getting pinned over and over again, and then R-Truth eventually pulling some shenanigans off to get it. Just a fun little spot to get that thrown in in the match. And also what I would think would probably be a cool spot if it happened in real life, Tozawa coming down 100 miles an hour towards the ring, getting thrown up in a pop-up powerbomb by Owens, thrown to a table outside of it. So 
that I think that was just a fun way to get the 24 seven picture, just slightly integrated into it. And also just have a cool spot by Owens in here. And then at 19, we have Angelo Dawkins. Montez Ford is currently in the match still. Uh, Angelo Dawkins unites with him. We also have Rick Boogs coming at 20. He, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura still in the match, so that sets up their tag team. But at number 21, we have Jey Uso. And earlier in the night to kick off the show was Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. And the Usos were banned from ringside for that match. And Kevin Owens, when the ref is knocked down, comes in with the chair Hits Roman Reigns, hits him with the super kick and pop a power bomb, and Seth Rollins wins the match from help with by Kevin Owens. And right before the Royal Rumble match kicks off, just right before, we see Roman Reigns in his office with the Usos right there, and you could tell Roman is pissed. He is pissed. He is livid. So the Usos are trying to talk him out of it, trying to get him in a better mood, but he Roman cuts him them off and says, "You guys are in the Royal Rumble match," and they're like, "What?" And then he screams and bangs on the table. You guys are in the match. Brock versus Bobby hasn't happened yet. I'm saving that for the main event, and I'll tell you what happens in that match at the end of the Rumble. But that match hasn't happened yet. Roman Reigns says, if you guys want to stay in the bloodline, if you want to show you belong in this bloodline, you have to win the Royal Rumble for me. I lost tonight due to shenanigans by Kevin Owens. I should not have lost that match. I should still be champion right now. I'm still the head of the table. I don't care what anyone says. Just don't let Brock Lesnar walk out of WrestleMania as champion. You guys have to win this match, and don't make me take matters into my own hands. And then the segment ends. And Jey Uso's in this match now. He comes in at 21, and right after him, 22, is Jimmy Uso. They're both in the match now, and right away, they eliminate the Street Profits and uh, Nakamura and Boogs. They eliminate two tag teams right off the bat, and they're looking strong. And right after this comes Randy Orton. Now teaming up with Matt Riddle. We're seeing a lot of tag teams uh, being filled up in the ring right now. And then King Woods comes into the ring. And then now we see four tag teams in the ring. These are the guys in the ring right now. We see Orton and Riddle, the Usos, the New Day. And Owens and Jericho, after squaring off before, they see all these tag teams come together. And they're like, I mean, it would be only it'd only be fair. It'd only be beneficial to us if we just team up again. So Owens and Jericho team up, reuniting Jericho for this one night. Four tag teams in the ring right now going at it. And right after this, at number 25, comes Braun Breaker. And Braun Breaker walks into the ring slowly, and everyone's staring him down. All these tag teams are staring at him as he's in the ring, and it's a big face-off between Breaker and all these tag teams. And he knocks down the New Day. He knocks down RK Bro. He knocks down Jericho. And then he eliminates both of the Usos at once. Both of them. Braun Breaker looks strong, eliminates arguably one of the greatest tag teams in history that are currently aligned with the bloodline. Both at once. He's looking strong. He's the only one standing in the ring. Everyone else is knocked down on the ground. And then comes number 26, which is Walter. And Walter walks in the ring, and now they have a stare down, which could be a future hint at an NXT title program down the line. And they stare each other down, and they start getting into it. Walter gets... The upper hand in this matchup because you want to make him look strong as well, but it's pretty evenly matched. And then Walter starts to get some momentum, knocking down some guys like Big E and Xavier Woods. So Walter looks strong in this as well, even though he doesn't completely beat Breaker in that standoff. But at number 27, the lucky number, we have Kofi Kingston, and that sets up the whole new day in this Royal Rumble. Kofi Kingston is now in the match. And then at 28 is United States champion Damian Priest. Damian Priest lays waste to everyone. He doesn't eliminate everyone just yet. He doesn't eliminate anyone at all, actually. But he he's the only one standing in the ring for a couple seconds until some guys get up. He looks strong. He looks energetic and makes the match have a good feel. And then at 29, we have AJ Styles, another big name to throw in this match. And him and Priest will have a stare down that could potentially set up a feud before WrestleMania or maybe even at WrestleMania if Edge versus Styles doesn't happen. And they stare each other down. They get into a fight. And then... At number 30 is Roman Reigns. Remember how we said before, don't make me take matters into my own hands? Well, now he has to. Roman Reigns comes in at number 30 as the 30th entrant, and right away he just goes on uh, an elimination spree. He eliminates Woods. He eliminates Kingston. He eliminates Styles. He eliminates Jericho, who's been in the match for basically the whole time. And then after this, we have seven guys left in the match. Um, 
it's between Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, Big E, Walter, Damian Priest, Braun Breaker, and Kevin Owens. And he eliminates Randy Orton right now. Then he eliminates Walter. And now we're down to the final four between Braun Breaker, Roman Reigns, Damian Priest, and Kevin Owens. And we've sort of been seeing seeds planted for an Owens versus Priest feud. And you could have them uh, fight along in this. You could have them have their own standoff for a couple minutes. And then after that standoff happens, Roman Reigns comes face-to-face with Braun Breaker. Breaker, who eliminated the Usos before, and Roman Reigns, who was the champion for 500-plus days, the head of the table, the one who carried the company since he returned. They're facing off together, and they have their own standoff as well. But uh, after that happens, uh, Reigns just eliminates Damian Priest. They'll they'll have their own standoff as well. Priest will look strong to try and build them up. Well, they're, they'll have their own standoff. And – and that sound off before, it looks like Reigns had the upper hand by a little bit against Breaker. But then after that, they have one more sand off that lasts a little bit longer. And this time, Braun Breaker eliminates Roman Reigns. Braun Breaker has eliminated the Usos, and he's eliminated Roman Reigns. And this leaves the final two, Kevin Owens and Braun Breaker. And when Braun Breaker eliminates Roman Reigns, he's, he's hype outside of the ring. Rome, uh, Roman Reigns is down. He's shocked. He doesn't know who Braun Breaker is. Braun Breaker is talking his smack to Roman Reigns outside of the ring. He doesn't realize Kevin Owens comes behind him, eliminates him, and Kevin Owens wins the Royal Rumble. Seth Rollins in this uh, in, on this pay-per-view won the Universal Championship by help from Kevin Owens, and we're going to set up that feud at WrestleMania. Owens, the only reason he did that is so he could get the shot at Rollins. We've seen Owens turn on everyone he's teamed with. So he's going to do the same with Rollins, set up that match at WrestleMania, because that, that story's really been brewing for a while. So give Rollins the title, the universal title. Have him face Owens at WrestleMania. And then after the Royal Rumble match, we see Bobby Lashley versus, Rome, uh, Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar in the main event for the WWE title. And Roman Reigns is pissed. He had the worst night of his career since winning the universal title. He lost his title to Seth Rollins. Him and the Bloodline were both eliminated by Braun Breaker, which is going to set up a feud for whenever he gets called up, Breaker, uh, between Breaker and Reigns, which is something everyone would like to see. Roman's pissed. And after this match, he sees Lesnar in the locker room, and Lesnar goes, you're weak. And he laughs in his face completely and then walks to the ring. He calls Roman weak. And then uh, Lesnar versus Lashley, Roman Reigns costs um, Lesnar the match. Roman Reigns costs him the match. Bobby Lashley wins the WWE Championship. And I know the uh, the WWE title is on Raw. Now Rollins, who is on Raw, is the Universal Champion. But you can just send Rollins to SmackDown and then have Owens challenge him there. Uh, Then you also have Roman versus Brock going on on SmackDown. So that gives SmackDown an extra punch because a lot of people have said, oh, SmackDown doesn't have a lot of depth right now. Well, now they do. Now they have Roman Roman versus Brock, and they have Owens versus Rollins going for them at WrestleMania. And something I was interested in doing for the Raw side, and we'll get into our in – in a completely different video, we'll get into our WrestleMania bookings down the line. I was thinking of doing a potential triple threat for that title between Bobby Lashley, Big E, and Damian Priest, who will eventually lo- lose the U.S. title to either Styles or uh, Kevin Owens. But with Kevin Owens winning, it lo- likely won't be him. It will probably be Styles. That's a match that I want to see that kind of gives Damian Priest uh, a lot of momentum towards becoming a main card guy. And a lot of people think Big E should win the Rumble to get him under his feet again, to get him back in his shoes. And although he doesn't win the Rumble here, you could have him pin Bobby Lashley in a triple threat at WrestleMania while also getting Damian Priest into the main event scene there. Um, So you have Big E pin Bobby Lashley in that WWE title match. Damian Priest versus Big E set uh, later down in the summer where Damian Priest will eventually win the WWE title for the first time. And this match also, uh, the Royal Rumble also will set up a future NXT feud between Braun Breaker and Walter. And it will also set up a match between Goldberg and Sheamus at WrestleMania and a potential match down the line if Goldberg is willing to come back for one more match at either SummerSlam or Crown Jewel between him and Big E for his retirement match. So I, the way I stuck to this was keep this, surrounded by a couple guys i mean we had that jericho return which would probably blow the roof off um but it was really surrounded by a lot of guys because before the match with the usos and reigns it was kind of clear that they would all be in the match at some point so it's surrounded by them uh it's also surrounded by 
a potential Randy Orton and Matt Riddle feud. And um, it didn't come up on the screen, but Randy Orton does eliminate Matt Riddle in there. And the way I would have it happen is Randy Orton just – they're both teaming up together, and Randy Orton just goes behind him and eliminates him. And Matt Riddle, at first he's shocked, but then it turns into a smile. And he says, ah, oh, Randy, you got me. And Randy just looks at him in confusion. And that doesn't set up the full feud just yet, but you could have it where Randy eliminates him there, and then Matt Riddle doesn't understand the message that Randy doesn't want to be a part of him anymore. You start to slowly, slowly uh, plant the seeds for that match for WrestleMania. And as a whole, I just I, I, I try to keep this surrounded by some guys like the Bloodline. I try to keep it surrounded by Big E the whole time, making him look strong. Braun Breaker, who eventually gets his rub in this match, eliminating all the Bloodline. Uh, Chris Jericho comes in this match, obviously, as I just said before. Um, really, I just I wanted to keep it kind of grounded and just surrounded by guys with some side uh, storylines going on and a bunch of mid carters thrown in the mix. Um, I didn't have too many surprise returns in this match, but again, with the way I was trying to build up storylines for WrestleMania, I didn't think that was needed. So that was the way I did it, but I want to hear your feedback on my match. Yeah, I really liked it. I think the way you booked it was pretty smart. Um, I think a few things about it. I really liked, I liked the emphasis on tag teams. I think that was very interesting. Um, I think definitely getting that standstill when Braun Breaker comes in, um, which is, in, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's, it's very interesting considering what I kind of did. Um, it's very interesting how you booked Braun Breaker here. I think you booked him really strong, and I really like that. I think having a relentless Roman who's pissed at everything and screwing over everyone because he doesn't care because he lost is a great idea to have it. I also like the pick of Owens as winner. Um, I think it makes the most sense. I think Owens and Rollins will have a really good clinic at WrestleMania if they give him the time to. Um, I also like the fact that you emphasized Damian Priest and had him last till the end. I think that makes sense. And I also really like the Forbidden Door entrant of Chris Jericho. I think it was a really smart way to have Forbidden Door entrant. So I really liked it. I think it was a really well done booking. All right, I appreciate it. Now we can get into your Royal Rumble match right now. So I'm excited right. to see this one. So let's go back to the men's Royal Rumble match. Let's talk about how I did it first. I'm just going to talk about things that happened earlier in the night. So keep in mind here that the show opens with Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. And there's a promo before this match of just Brock and Roman staring down backstage and Roman just walks up and flaps on the shoulder and just said, hey, buddy, I just want to wish you and your little girlfriend points to Paul Heyman. Good luck for tonight. Paul Heyman's cowering in the background. Brock Lesnar laughs, says, thanks, man. You too. Slaps him even harder on the back. And then they drop their titles and come to a standstill and look at each other. That's how you open the pay-per-view. Now, Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar goes on clean because Roman Reigns has no incentive to screw over Brock Lesnar here because Roman Reigns' whole character is he's cocky and he doesn't think he can lose because he's the greatest ever. So Roman Reigns does not interfere and Brock Lesnar beats Bobby Lashley clean. Now, later in the night, the match after the women's Royal Rumble, um, before the men's Royal Rumble, is Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. And I think Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins goes on like this. Roman Reigns is standing tall against Seth Rollins. Keep in mind, it's it's no DQ and the Usos have been banned from ringside. When out of nowhere, Paul Heyman shows up with the title belt and smacks it on Roman Reigns, smacks him in the face, screws him over. Seth Rollins hits a curb stomp. Seth Rollins is your new universal champion. And Roman Reigns is furious. Paul Heyman runs away crackling. So the before the Royal Rumble, there's a backstage promo and Roman Reigns is infuriated and Brock Lesnar happens to walk by and Roman's like, Brock, what the hell? You know, I didn't, you know, I, wh why did Paul do that? Brock said, I didn't tell Paul to do anything. I, I wasn't involved with it. That's really weird. I, I have nothing to do with this. Roman Reigns even just gets in his face and says, okay, find Paul for me. Brock says, as you wish, guides Roman there, opens his locker room, Paul Heyman's there. You see Roman Reigns freak out on Heyman and slam him through a table. So that's what sets up the Royal Rumble match. Now, if we're talking about the Royal Rumble match, the first entrant is Austin Theory. 
because a mid show promo shows Vince McMahon sitting with Austin Theory and saying, you know what? I used to know an Austin and the Austin that I knew he and I got along great. But the one thing that made him get along more with me was when I put him into hard situations because you got to go for the brass ring. You got to grab the bat brass ring. So as a result, Austin, how would you like to be in the Royal Rumble? I'm already in the Royal Rumble. Well, now you're number one. Austin Theory goes to the ring, pissed off, saying, you know, gets on the mic, cuts a promo, says, you know what? Vince believes in me. I believe in me. This is going to be a great show for Austin Theory. I'm going to do great. Number two, come from the back and let's have a great start to this match. Takes a selfie. Out comes AJ Styles is your number two guy. AJ Styles comes out. And part of the reason why I have them starting out is because I think these two have great cardio and I think they can definitely stay in this match for a bit. And I think that they'd be really nice facing off because it's kind of, you know, older talent versus newer talent. Often theory is in his mid twenties or early twenties and AJ is 45. Um, it's just a good way to kind of develop some of your younger talent and also showcase some of your older talent. So AJ styles and Austin theory are fighting. Um, AJ hits a Pele kick. Austin theory hits an ATO. Um, both of them are at a standstill. They're both sitting in each corner. Number three, Angela Dawkins comes down to the ring. Angela Dawkins comes down to the ring with a solo cup in hand. He's got his sunglasses on. He takes off the sunglasses, yells, I want the smoke, only to immediately be Pele kicked by AJ Styles and then eliminated by Austin Theory. And the two keep brawling. And so AJ Styles and Austin Theory are brawling at this point. Um... It's just old guard versus new guard. They're they're vicious. They're, you know, not being able to tear away from each other. Number four, Johnny Knoxville walks down to the ring. And Johnny Knoxville is like, I've done a lot of extreme stuff, but this is the most extreme thing I've done. I'm entering the WWE Royal Rumble. And he's walking down to the ring and he just gets in and stands in the corner because AJ Styles and Austin Theory can't be taken off each other. They're both fighting that much. They're in the corner beating the crap out of each other. Don't even no notice Knoxville gets in. Number, fifth, number five is Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn runs down in the ring. He just stares at Knoxville, does like a weird like no blink. You know, this is a conspiracy, Knoxville. You're in this match and you're here to take me out. Knoxville goes, I don't know what you're talking about. That makes no sense. AJ Styles and Austin Theory turn around. They just stare at Zane. Zane's freaking out saying, get the cameras on me. Get the cameras on me. This is a conspiracy. They brought you guys here. You're all here to eliminate me. AJ nods and says, that's the point of the match. Austin Theory like reiterates it, says, yeah. And then Johnny Knoxville out of nowhere kicks him in the dick and eliminates Sami Zayn. So Sami Zayn is out of the match. And Johnny Knoxville is... Just, you know, celebrating. Oh, my God, I did it. I eliminated someone. This is great. I'm, you know, so good. You know, AJ Styles and Austin Theory are just looking hands on their hips, just like what's going on. Number six is Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens comes down to the ring. And there's nothing Kevin Owens likes doing more than beating the crap out of celebrities that appear on WWE shows. He's done it with Logan Paul. He's did it with Machine Gun Kelly. And that's what he's going to do to Johnny Knoxville. He delivers not one, not two, but three pop-up power bombs to Johnny Knoxville, then slides under the bottom ropes, grabs a table, sets it up on the outside, picks Johnny Knoxville up for a fourth, and power bombs him over the top rope through the table, eliminating him. Because Johnny like, Knoxville's whole thing. I like yeah. how we both had Kevin Owens pop up power bomb uh pop up power bomb someone outside of the ring through a table to eliminate. Yeah, I mean it makes the most sense with his character. I just think you know, you have Johnny Knoxville go that way. His whole thing is he's from Jackass. He's those crazy stunts that are super, you know, detrimental to your health. Why not have him do the craziest stunt of the Royal Rumble match? Why not have him get power bombed outside of the ring? So it's Adrian Styles. It's Austin Theory, and it's Kevin Owens in the ring. Now, next entry at number seven is Mad Cat Moss. He comes in, he hits whatever his moves are on AJ Styles, Austin Theory, and Kevin Owens. He does this little goofy, haha, I'm funny. I do bad comedy. You know, St. Louis, you're, you're stinky. I think the arch is only made that way because they were trying to get away from you, but they were stuck. You know, some stupid comedy line. And number eight comes out. That's Montez Ford and Montez Ford's out here. He just has a weird comedy moment with Madcap. Madcap offers him money from a briefcase. Montez Ford offers him a solo cup. They trade. They nod at each other. 
And then they just stand waiting for the next person saying, okay, this sounds good. We're together on this. You know, we might, you know, not be both faces. We might not be both heels, but at least we'll face whoever's the next guy. No one's going to be able to stop us. And here he is. And Gunter makes his way down to the ring. And all the superstars just stand there. And you can just see Kevin Owens mouth. Oh, shit. Because Gunter gets in the ring, he strikes his pose with his hands behind his back, and then Montez Ford, just you see his eyes widen, because he has some of the best facial expressions in the company, he's really good at selling stuff facially, and he gets popped up and put planted into a massive power bomb by Gunter. Madcap Moss runs towards him, Gunter hits a big boot, throws him out of the ring, Madcap Moss is eliminated. Montez Ford is thrown out by Gunter. Montez Ford selling all the while his wide eyes, et cetera. Oh my God, this guy's a monster. You know, Gunter plants everyone else. He, he plants Austin Theory. He plants AJ Styles. He plants Kevin Owens. He's just standing alone, striking his pose, waiting for the next person to come down to the ring. And it's Dominic Mysterio. And why Dominic Mysterio, you might ask? Because Dominic Mysterio doesn't really have a place in this rumble. And I feel like he should have a crazy way to go out. So Dominic Mysterio gets up there. He's just like, I can do this without my dad. I'm, I got this. I'm, you know, prepared. Comes in immediately lariated by Gunter. Massive, massive clothesline. And he is no joke. Put on the top rope. And keep in mind, the announcer table is still intact because even though Naomi was on it before, she was slammed on, she didn't go through. Somehow, I want to see Dominic Mysterio on the upper turnbuckle, propped up there by Gunter. Out of nowhere, he takes him throws him all the way from the ring through the announce table. Dominic Mysterio is eliminated in one of the most crazy elimination spots ever. It immediately gets over Gunter. Immediately. Number 11, Otis comes out. And Otis is out here. You know, you get a whole, you know, Otis strikes a pose. I'm strong. Gunter is like, you know, strikes his pose. Um, you know, Matt is sacred, it's, you know, etc. And Otis and Gunter start de delivering blows to each other. All the others are still passed out in the corners because they're selling Gunter's attacks that much. And Otis hits the ropes, is trying to go for a cross body. Gunter plants him with a big boot, tosses Otis out. Otis is eliminated. He's waiting for the next person to come out. And it's Riddle. And Riddle comes down in the ring. Whoa, bro, I think I remember you from back in NXT or something like that. Riddle comes in the ring, has a stare down with Gunter, and then they begin. To, and then even before they exchange blows, Kevin Owens comes in and beats the crap out of Riddle. So Gunter just watches in the corner as Riddle and KO are going at it. Austin Theory and AJ Styles are delivering blows to each other again. You know, this is fine. Gunter's chilling out. He's not the target of anyone's attacks right now. But then entrant number 13 comes in, and it's Damian Priest. And Damian Priest, the current United States champion, comes down and he faces off with Gunter. And Gunter's like, maybe I have a challenge here. So Damian Priest and Gunter start delivering blows to each other. Gunter delivers a big boot. Damian Priest is planted. He picks Damian Priest up, tries to throw him out. Damian Priest reverses it. And Damian Priest eliminates Gunter. And I think this makes the most sense because Damian Priest and Gunter are both recent NXT products. Gunter has already had a great showing in this match, and he shows that he's an unstoppable monster. Let's boost Damian Priest this much more and make him be the guy that eliminated Gunter. So Gunter is eliminated by Damian Priest. Number 14 is Pete Dunne. Because what happens is Riddle is sitting in the corner. Damian Priest is standing up. Damian and Riddle have a face-off, and they're friends. Pete Dunne comes down to the ring. And Pete Dunne is the former tag team partner of Riddle, but he also had a feud against Damian Priest in NXT. So there's bad blood with him and Damian Priest. There's good blood with him and Riddle, but there's also bad blood. Because of that bad blood, Riddle doesn't know who to choose. And in the end, they're all just staring at each other for 90 seconds. And all the while, AJ Styles and Austin Theory are still fighting in a corner. Like, that's going to be a running plot point in this match. Those two are going to be fighting. Because number 15 comes out, and it's Randy Orton. And Randy Orton comes down, and at this point, Pete Dunne's already knocked down Damian Priest. Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle are just looking at each other. Randy Orton comes down, and he just looks at Riddle. He just looks at Pete Dunne, and he's like, 
are you really going to choose this guy over me, Matt? And Riddle looks at him. No, bro, never. Pete Dunne raises one eyebrow. He doesn't even need to talk at all in this match. He just needs to sell the facial expressions. Pete Dunne raises one eyebrow. And then immediately is planted by an RKO. Now, Riddle is just staring down at Pete Dunne's body. Randy goes to eliminate him. No, bro, that's my friend. Don't eliminate him. No. Randy just looks at him. And they're staring at each other. And Randy backs Riddle into a corner saying, we are a team. We have worked together this whole time. You need to understand that to win this match, you need to eliminate people that you're closely al allied with, and both of us can't win this match. Then the clock ticks down. Number 16, Shinsuke Nakamura's music hits, and he comes out and do his, does his poses, but he's actually there to enter, introduce the real number 16 entrant. It's Rick Boogs. Rick Boogs comes out with a gu guitar, starts just chanting, you know, says a love song just says why can't we be friends why can't we be friends plays a metal rendition of it on guitar gets in the middle of the ring starts headbanging doing everything immediately planted with an rko by Matt, randy orton books falls onto his guitar it splits in half you know that's an easy spot to do and then randy orton picks him up and throws him out of the ring randy orton showboats turns around rko matt riddle riddle rkos randy orton Stares down to him, starts shouting at him. He's had enough. He's he's snapped. Riddles just said, bro, what do you mean? You, you know, this is everyone for himself. Well, guess what? I'm throwing you out. He throws out Randy Orton. Riddle has eliminated Randy Orton from the Royal Rumble, and that's going to start the breakup and their feud that will hopefully be a WrestleMania program. So after this, um, a few things happen. Damian Priest hits his finishing maneuver on Pete Dunne, and Pete Dunne's eliminated. And then in short form, right after that, um, Damian Priest is eliminated by Riddle, which is the shocker. Um, Riddle and Kevin Owens start throwing hands at each other. Austin Theory and AJ Styles are still fighting each other. And we're waiting for the countdown of who's coming in next. And it's Biggie. And Biggie comes into the ring. And he stares at Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens stares at him. And they know that they've been involved in so many championship matches recently and that they've been involved in a feud recently and they know what each other are capable of. So they immediately go after each other. I want to see Kevin Owens and Big E throwing punches at each other. Kevin Owens tries to hit a pop of power bomb. It's reversed into a big ending. Kevin Owens rolls under the bottom rope. He's not able to be eliminated. Big E moves on. Big E starts beating up AJ Styles. He beats up Austin Theory. He beats up Riddle. He beats up everyone that's in that ring. Entrant 18, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph comes down to the ring. Big E, man, we used to be, you know, we used to be buddies back in 2013. I brought you in from NXT. Remember that? Remember that? Big E just stares blankly at him. Then Big E runs forward, tries to hit a lariat, but Dolph ducks, hits a super kick. Big E is on the ground, knocked out. And Dolph Ziggler just starts saying, it should have been me, Big E. I brought you into this company. I should have had that role. It should have been me. I should have been the main event guy. I've been busting my ass since 2009. I have been that guy. I have wanted to be the WWE champion forever. I don't care if I have to go somewhere else to be the champion. I am the man. I should have been the one pushed to the stars. I should have been the main eventer. I got myself over. You know it. Clock starts counting down. Dolph just gets a mic, says, whoever it is, come out here. You know I'm going to beat your ass anyways. Starts counting down. Hits zero. And the music just doesn't hit. No one comes out for a second. Dolph Ziggler is confused. And then out of nowhere, woo, 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 you know it. And Matt Cardona comes out of the back. Matt Cardona is your forbidden door entrant in the Royal Rumble. And the reason why I'm doing this is a few reasons. Number one, Matt Cardona is objectively, besides Chris Jericho, who you already mentioned, uh, Justin, he's objectively the least, like, you know, the most likely guy that could come in through the Forbidden Door. He hasn't really got a ton of bad blood with him in WWE. And he also has a lot of storyline ties to everyone. Since he's mainly working for Impact right now, it's super conceivable that they could bring him in. Have the announcers mention the whole, he's called the Deathmatch King. He's an ECW original. You know, blah, 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 blah. He gets in the ring and it's Matt Cardona 
and it's Dolph Ziggler, and they're staring at each other. And there's a callback to back in 2010 where Dolph Ziggler lost to Matt Cardona and Zack Ryder, who, Matt Cardona, Zack Ryder at the time, Zack Ryder became U.S. champion after having that whole internet movement. And then Matt Cardona just stares at him and said, it should have been you, broski. Plants him with a rough rider. Dolph Ziggler is eliminated. Matt Cardona has eliminated Dolph Ziggler. He hits the LI pose. The fans are going crazy. And then Big E comes in, hits him with a big ending, and eliminates him. Because quite honestly, you don't really need Matt Cardona there for a long time. If you want to be the Forbidden Door entrant, that's totally cool. Just don't rely on him for a super long time. I think this is the way that makes the most sense because it's relating to an old past story. And it's a nice little cameo appearance from Matt Cardona. And the crowd will pop for it because Zack Ryder was always super over and Matt Cardona has completely reinvented himself in the independent scene. And he's super well known to like independent wrestling fans as well. So Matt Cardona is your forbidden door entrant. Number 20 is Kofi Kingston. Kofi comes down in the ring. He just sees Big E. They give each other a hug and they immediately start going to town on everyone else. Um, Kofi Kingston starts beating up Austin Theory. Um, Biggie starts beating up Kevin Owens. AJ Styles is just here and there hitting stuff on everyone. Right now, your five people in the ring right now are Kevin Owens, Biggie, Kofi Kingston, Austin Theory, and AJ Styles. So those are your five that are still there. Um, everyone else has been eliminated by at this point. Um, I'm just confirming that, looking at my stuff. Yeah, everyone else has been eliminated by now. So um Oh, and Riddle. Riddle's in there, too. So um, Kofi Kingston and Riddle have a fun little stare down. Um, Riddle can just go, bro. And Kofi Kingston can just, like, shrug because he you know, doesn't understand. Because, you know, Riddle just beat the crap out of Randy Orton. What's going on here? So there are six people in the ring. It's Riddle. It's Kofi Kingston. It's Big E. It's Austin Theory. It's AJ Styles. And it's Kevin Owens. So those are the six guys in the ring. Um not sure when you do Kofi Kingston's crazy spot, but it'll happen at some point. I just don't want to be the one to predict it. Next person, Rey Mysterio comes in at 21. Booyaka, booyaka. He hits a 619 on Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston pops up, hits him with an SOS. Rey Mysterio and Kofi start brawling. Rey Mysterio looks at Big E. They start brawling. But Rey just looks at Riddle and starts brawling with Riddle because... I didn't know this until I booked this, but apparently Rey Mysterio is on the Raw roster, so therefore, I'd imagine he and Dominic have had some run-ins with Randy Orton and Riddle, so it would make the most sense that those two would go after each other. Um, so, there are seven people in the ring now. Everyone's going after each other. Next entrant, Sheamus. Sheamus comes down to the ring, and the one thing WWE loves is callbacks. Oh, in 2012, at number 22, Sheamus came in and he won the Royal Rumble, last eliminating Chris Jericho or whatever. You know, Sheamus comes in, starts bro kicking people. Um, the ring is filling up. The ring, just to reiterate, the ring is fully filling up here. So there is now eight people in the ring. Sheamus delivers a bro kick to everyone. You know, fella hits the um, whatever the move is called on Austin Theory, the thing where you hang the guy over the ropes and you start beating him on the chest. Um, that happens. 23, Happy Corbin comes down to the ring. He just looks at Sheamus and he's just like, money? And he hands Sheamus some money. And Sheamus looks down he looks at him, fella. So Baron Corbin gives him a few hundred dollar bills. Sheamus and Corbin start beating the crap out of people. It's nine people in the ring right now. The ring is filling up, but no one is eliminated. Keep in mind, no one is being eliminated right now. Happy Corbin and Sheamus are just trying to neutralize the competition here. 24 is Chad Gable. Chad Gable comes in. Chad Gable. I don't, I don't know what you do with Chad Gable here. I love Chad Gable, but I, there's not much you can really do with him in this match with no Otis. So let's give him a nice showing here. Let's have him face off with Riddle. Let's have him be like, I beat you. Riddle says, bro. <laughs> Gable and Riddle start fighting each other. Gable hits a suplex. Gable gets bro kicked by Sheamus, and they are all down on the ground right now. So that is, I believe it's nine people in the ring, believe it or not. Um, no, it's it's 10. It's it's 10 people in the ring right now. Um, and so Seamus is standing tall and uh, Happy Corbin is standing tall. I just noticed right now that I actually forgot to put Happy Corbin here. Oh, I see him. OK, so Happy Corbin is standing tall. Seamus is standing tall. Starts counting down. Everyone starts getting their feet slowly. They're all slowly looking at each other, ready to fight each other. 25 comes out as Braun Breaker. 
And it's hilarious, Justin, because when you made your list, I was like, he literally booked it the same way I did, except with tag teams. But Braun Breaker comes into the ring. And also, we had him both come in at 25. Oh, yeah. No, that too. Um, But it's the perfect place to enter the guy if you want him to last till the final four. Spoiler, he does last till the final four. Um, Braun Breaker comes into the ring. And they all just look at him. And they're like, oh, my God. Who is this guy? Rey Mysterio goes to, you know, kick him. Braun Breaker delivers probably the craziest. I don't know how you could do it. I feel like he can do it, though. But Braun Breaker has to deliver a suplex that's so crazy that Rey Mysterio literally flies over the top rope and lands just flat on his back, but gets like super air, like a ton of air. He gets up. He looks at everyone. They're all like, oh, shit. And he just runs roughshod on everyone. He starts beating the crap out of everyone. Clotheslines, suplexes, uh, power slams, etc. He does a whole pose. He's flexing the audience. He's, you know... Going crazy, starts beating his chest like his Tarzan, etc. Starts counting down. Braun Breaker is the only one standing right now. 26. It's Pat McAfee. Because Pat McAfee is going to be in the women in the men's Royal Rumble because it will get them a ton of airtime on sports networks, and he's a huge personality. And I think it's, it makes a lot of sense for him to make an appearance. So let's have this be the most fun way possible. Pat McAfee slowly walks towards the ring. He's just, you know, plugging his podcast the whole time. He's saying stuff like, my good buddy Aaron Rodgers told me to prepare for this. He told me to be ready for this. So I brought some backup. AJ Hawk is there. For some reason, AJ Hawk knows how to hit a clothesline. AJ Hawk hits Braun Breaker with a clothesline. Braun Breaker's lying down, incapacitated. Pat McAfee's just standing tall in the middle of the ring saying, I did this. This is all me. I run this company. No one in the back is going to be ready to pull this man out. I am the best person in this company, whether it's commentator or personality or wrestler. I am the best one. 27, Omos. Omos walks down the ring. (laughs) Pat McAfee still has a microphone in his hand. (laughs) Turns around. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Pat McAfee gets big booted. I don't know if you can do it out of his shoes, but I kind of want to see him get big booted out of his shoes by Omos over the top rope. Pat McAfee is eliminated. Chad Gable runs towards Omos screaming. Chad Gable is eliminated. Happy Corbin runs towards him, offers him some money. Omos looks at it, flashes his gold chain, eliminates him. Uh, You know, he's beating the crap out of everyone. Everyone's lying down. Everyone's down. Robert Roode comes in at number 28, immediately eliminated. Because you have to have someone eliminated within like 10 seconds in a rumble. I would see if Robert Roode could be that guy. Because he could definitely build a storyline around that. He hasn't really done much recently. Let's see if he can break Santino's record, even though I don't think he can. So, Robert Roode is out. Um, Robert Roode is just on the outside. Almost is balking over the rope, kind of laughing at him, saying, ha ha ha, I got you out. Bang. Hit with a drop kick by AJ Styles. AJ Styles eliminates Omos, which makes the most sense. I mean, it's the thing that makes the most sense in this match. But right after AJ Styles is leveled with a closed line by Braun Breaker. Now, they're all down. Braun Breaker is the only one standing. Starts counting down. 29. It's Corey Graves. Because Corey Graves deserves some time to shine here. And I think Braun Breaker would be a really interesting talent to put him against. Corey Graves was recently cleared after having severe neck issues and spinal issues that made him retire. He was recently medically cleared. I think you get two commentators appearing in this rumble, and it's Graves and it's McAfee. So here's how I do it. Graves comes slowly down to the ring, and Graves just stares at Braun Breaker. And Braun Breaker just stares at Graves. And Braun Breaker lets, lets Graves come in the ring, tries to him with a clothesline. Graves ducks and starts punching him delivering kicks, tears off his announcer suit to reveal that he's still in gear. He came prepared. He was ready. Um, Graves and Breaker start beating the crap out of each other. Um, Eventually, Braun Breaker suplexes Corey Graves over the top rope. So Corey Graves is eliminated. So once again, it is Braun Breaker standing tall. And then out of nowhere from behind, Riddle tries to eliminate him. He turns around. Riddle looks at him. Bro? Riddle gets the most insane bump possible. I mean, like it needs to be higher than um, AJ. Not than um, it has to be higher than Rey Mysterio. It needs to be like he needs to be thrown to the sky. Um, Riddle is going to be eliminated by Braun Breaker here. So your guys in the ring right now are Austin Theory, they're AJ Styles, 
they're Braun Breaker, they're Kevin Owens, and they are Big E. So those are your five guys in the ring. AJ Styles, last gasp, somehow is prepared for a phenomenal forearm, comes off the top rope, hits Braun Breaker with it, everyone is down. 30 comes down to the ring. That's Roman Reigns. And Roman comes in the ring, and he's pissed. And he knows fully well that all he has to do is just to throw all these bodies over the top rope, and he's done. He doesn't need to do anything else. But he's just like, I lost. I'm furious. I'm going to mangle these people. So he starts beating the crap out of everyone. He refers back to his history with AJ Styles. He throws him in a headlock, chokes him out. Um, he looks at Braun Breaker. He hits him with a clothesline, hits him with a power bomb, hits him with a bunch of stuff, says, this is my yard. I'm the head of the table. Go back to your puny little developmental and doesn't eliminate him because he's still cocky. Keep in mind, Roman Reigns is someone who's very cocky. He's going to prioritize beating the crap out of someone over eliminating them. Beats the crap out of everyone. During this, you see Austin Theory and AJ Styles slowly get to their feet, but they don't want anything to do with Roman Reigns, so they agree to help each other. Out of nowhere, AJ Styles turns on Austin Theory and throws him over the top rope. Austin Theory at this point has lasted maybe 50, 60 minutes in the Rumble. He entered number one. AJ Styles like gloats at him, turns around instantly into a Superman punch, and AJ Styles is eliminated by Roman Reigns. So your final four are Braun Breaker, they're Big E, they're Roman Reigns, and they're Kevin Owens. Now, the way I do this is simple. I think Braun Breaker is the person who has the least to lose here because he's developmental. So I'd have Braun Breaker have a nice showing here. However, I'd have Roman Reigns get the better of him. Roman Reigns eliminate him. Then I would have it be down to Kevin Owens, Big E, and Roman Reigns. Kevin and Big E against, agree to go fight against Roman Reigns. Um, and they actually show that they're fighting against him. Like They don't try to turn on each other or anything. They realize that he's the bigger target and that he will beat the crap out of them. So they try to fight him. Roman's too much. Roman eliminates Kevin Owens. So you are down to the final two. And it's Big E and it's Roman Reigns. Now, Roman Reigns looks at Big E. And he's lying on the ground and he laughs. And he just says, you're done, man. You're done. Don't try anything else. Don't try to get up. I beat Xavier. I beat Kofi. I beat all your buddies. There's no one here to help you. Out of nowhere, Brock Lesnar's music hits. Brock Lesnar comes down to the ring, looks at Roman, and chuckles. And Roman Reigns runs toward him and starts trying to get at Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar hops up on one apron. Roman runs towards him. He hops down. He runs on another, hops on the other side of the apron. Roman runs towards him, hops down. Brock Lesnar is playing with Roman Reigns right now because he knows that he has Roman trapped and Roman's at his wit's end. And finally, Roman is leaning, trying to get a hold of Brock Lesnar, trying to get a hold of his WWE championship when he turns around and is hit by the big ending. Biggie hoists up Roman Reigns, stares at Brock Lesnar, nods, and eliminates Roman Reigns. And Big E is your winner of the Men's Royal Rumble. And the reason why I did this, there are a few different things that this sets up. I think, for me, the most sense that would be in a WrestleMania program right now would be Big E and Seth Rollins. I think the title that Big E lost in that five-way against Brock Lesnar and the rest of them, I think Brock Lesnar nodding at Big E just nods at him and says, in the effect of, you weren't prepared for me. I understand. This is your moment. Let Brock show that a little bit to Reigns. It also puts Reigns at his wits end and has him force himself into the Elimination Chamber match to get a shot at Lesnar at WrestleMania. What this also does is it lets Kevin Owens get a nice WrestleMania program with Damian Priest and has a nice showing for Braun Breaker. I think there's a few other things it does. I think AJ Styles and Austin Theory could easily be a, a WrestleMania program and it'd make the most sense um, just seeing where the storyline is going. I think it's, a you know, it works on that riddle Orton moment a little bit and I think it's really nice on how they did it. And then the rest of it, I think it just feels fluid overall. Um, I think it's good showing by Gunter. I think having, I believe I have him having five eliminations. I think that's a really good uh, total for him for his first match on the main roster. But that's my uh, men's Royal Rumble. That's how I book it. I think that was great. Uh, just like your women's one. I really like the way, first of all, how you booked Gunther in this match. I mean, you didn't have him in for too long, but he doesn't really have to be in for too long. The reason I put him in so late in mine is because, I mean, you don't have to have him in too long, but I wouldn't have him in towards the end a little. But you still made him look really strong, and 
you gave him a moment where he's just the only one in the ring that looks strong. He's decimating everyone. And then he ultimately gets eliminated by Damian Priest, who's another guy who needs some sort of rub like that to get on that main card level. Um, I also like how you booked Braun Breaker. Uh, you said before you even started, we booked him very similarly, and we did. Um, him walking into the ring with a boatload of people there and just laying waste to everyone, being the only one standing. I think that's a great way to do it. Obviously, that's how I did it. That's how you did it as well. Um, in terms of Roman Reigns, I, I like the way how you I, – I liked how you got him out of the match with Brock Lesnar, playing mind games with him without even being in the match, and then Big E eliminating him. It still makes Roman look strong. It's just it looks like Roman got completely outsmarted, and that's probably the best way to do it. Again, that kicks off the WrestleMania feud, Roman versus Brock for the WWE title. And – also with Braun Breaker, I mean, I like as as I said, I like how you booked him. the The reason I mine was a little different in ter- in terms of I had Breaker eliminating Reigns and Reigns eliminated Breaker in this one. Obviously, I understand why because I mean he's still a developmental guy in NXT, but I had him take out Reigns just because I think that was the perfect like if there, if you're gonna have a guy to take out Reigns on his own, I think it's either gonna be Big E or Braun Breaker. And Braun Breaker is a guy that no one really knows. So for eventually when he gets called up to the main roster, they could be like, hey, that's a guy that eliminated Roman Reigns in the bloodline. That could kind of be his Keith Lee moment when Keith Lee uh, went off at Survivor Series that one year. Um, but in terms of Reigns just eliminating Breaker and yours, I mean, that, I was fine with that one. But that's really why I just wanted to explain why mine was different because we both had uh, we had Breaker get eliminated by Reigns and yours and Breaker eliminate Reigns in mine. So that's what I had. Uh, that's why I had it. And. As a whole, I really like how you set up the Austin Theory versus AJ Styles storyline for WrestleMania in there. Them just fighting the whole match and being two Iron Men from one and two. Um, and those spots that you set up with um, with Gunther and the table and um, and what was it? It was Braun Breaker and Rey Mysterio and, and Riddle and Riddle. Those spots with Riddle and Rey Mysterio, those would be pretty crazy spots in real life. And those just make those two look even stronger as it is. And that was the goal of them putting them in the trumble. Obviously, they're not going to win, but you want to make them look strong for when they inevitably get called up to the main roster. And I just, I, I again, I like the structure of this match. I like how you structured it really well and just really stayed focused on a couple guys throughout. Because I mean, we we kind of knew Roman Reigns was probably going to end up in that match as well. Um, and it kind of just stayed to stay to a story with AJ Styles, Austin Theory, uh, Big E. Guys like that just being in the match the whole way through. And I also, the last thing I liked was Riddle and Orton. I like how you set that up. Um, it doesn't fully demolish them right away, which is what I tried doing. I don't want them, that alliance to get, uh, RK Bro to get demolished right away. But I like how you booked it um, in the way where, where there's tension, but they're not done right away. They still have time to build this feud. So I like that a lot. Um, but as a whole, yeah, your, your rumble was great. But – for your rumble, I mean, were there any other guys that you considered having win it? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, originally, the plan was Kevin Owens to be in Big E's spot. Um, I think it was one that I was really going back and forth over. Um, just because I feel like the winner should be um, one of those two. Um, like, objectively, when you said Kevin Owens is going to win yours, I was like, okay, yeah, that that's kind of why I wanted. Um, it's an either or for me. Um, because once you get to that final four, um, if you run through mine again, I'm going to put mine back up on here, but, um, if you run through mine again, um, a few things that I was going to structure it as was just, um, Roman Reigns eliminating Braun Breaker and Big E and just having Kevin Owens being his thing. But also I was considering having Roman Reigns being out even before Kevin Owens and Big E faced off and just had it be Kevin Owens and Big E as the, as the final two. Um, I do think this is going to be a real life final four. Like, unironically, I think it's going to be the real-life Final Four. Um, you had something almost identical, except you didn't have Biggie, you had Damian Priest. But I do think you're going to have Kevin Owens, uh, Roman Reigns, and Braun Breaker in that Final Four. I think Biggie's going to be in there because I think he's going to be your winner. But I just I just feel like this is going to be a very accurate look at your Final Four. Um, I think Braun Breaker was someone who I actually considered winning it, believe it or not. I was originally like, maybe I'll have him win, but then I was like... I remember the whole shit show that was the Rhea Charlotte storyline. And I was just like, I don't really want to do that, especially since he's still raw. He's still a little bit green. Let's give him some more time in NXT, especially since he still has kind of a few, but Tommaso. Um, 
In addition, Braun Breaker wasn't going to be the person that was going to be my big NXT Final Four rep. It was originally going to be Tommaso Ciampa. Um, Tommaso was originally going to come into Braun Breaker's spot and then be in the Final Four doing the same stuff just because like, I feel like they needed to be, debut him. Um, I already said it on our Monday show, though. He has bursitis in his elbow, which means that his you know elbow is inflamed and he can't really wrestle with it. So that's why also if you go back to my number 14 entrant, this was... Um, it's Pete done right now, but this was originally supposed to be Tommaso Ciampa. Um, I wanted to last until the final four, have him get a lot of time in here. Um, but once Tommaso was out, I was like, let's do Pete Dunn. Let's utilize some stuff with the tag teams. And I think something that I think out of anything in this match, like the way I booked it that I think could happen, I think it could be the way they address Randy Orton and Matt Riddle. I think it makes the most sense. I think having Pete Dunn in there and having Riddle be hesitant to hit his former tag team partner and then Randy back him into the corner after hitting his former tag team partner with an RKO and saying you need to be relentless and then having Matt Riddle do that right against Randy Orton. I think that makes the most sense for how they're going to do it in the aspect of no, not that way where Randy could still even be the heel. If you want Randy to be the heel in this fight, which I don't think should happen, I think I want to see a heel Matt Riddle. Um, if you want him to be the heel, that's an easy way to do it. Um, but I think based on like the way that I booked the end of this, um, something else that I did too, is I kind of just thought back to last year's Royal Rumbles. And the reason I had, um, the winner come in at number 30 in the women's is because it's going to be the number that wins for the women's, whether it's Ronda, which I think is going to happen, unfortunately, or it's Bailey. I think that's going to happen. And also I just thought for this match, I was like, Daniel Bryan was my favorite to win the men's match last year. He came in at number 17. So it's kind of a nice number to have your winner and come in because it's, you know, enough time for them to hang in there, but they don't feel old in the match. So that's why I had Biggie in there because Biggie's definitely capable of hanging around for like 13 entrants and then chilling out. Um, but I think overall, I think Kevin Owens and Biggie were my only two that I really considered. Um, I thought about Damian Priest a little. I thought about Roman Reigns a little. I thought about Braun Breaker a little, but I, eventually I was like, now those guys make sense. Let's just go with Biggie. Yeah, those are honestly like with who I was thinking of winning. I was the main two guys. At first, I had Biggie for a while when we booked this match. I when I made it a couple of weeks ago, I had Biggie winning, and then literally the other day, I switched to Kevin Owens. Uh, so those are definitely my two. Like, it, I think Biggie's going to win it in real life, uh, Biggie or Roman Reigns. But if it's based off who I think should, I think it's definitely Biggie or Kevin Owens, as you said. Um, I did also kind of consider Braun Breaker winning, not really for like for too long, but I, 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 there was a part of me that was like, what if he just wins it? He eliminated all the bloodline. Why doesn't he just win it at this point and take out Roman Reigns in the final two? Uh, but at the same time, I was like, they need time to build them up. So I, I just didn't do, I didn't pull the trigger on him just yet. Um, and really, I, the only guys I was really thinking of were Biggie and, and Kevin Owens. And I wanted to have a way where I could implement Roman Reigns in my match too without having him lose and look weak. And I think I did a good job of that. And you de you definitely did a great job at that too with the mind games uh, with Brock Lesnar. And that's I could see it going down right like that in real life as well. Um, but, yeah, we're definitely on the same page for this, I believe. And we can sort of wrap it up now. Um, the Royal Rumble is any day now. I, I can't wait for it. Oh, I'm um, so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, Sam, this is one of the years where we don't know who's going to win. Yeah. Uh, Right now, do you want to make one formal prediction for the Rumble, like who you actually think will win? Yeah. Um, I do think Ronda Rousey is going to be your Women's Royal Rumble winner. I think it's unfortunate. I think the way that I thought of booking it, where they have her come out after the Becky's ma Becky match, is probably the best way to do it. I think literally if you could just have the Women's Royal Rumble start the show, then have uh, Bobby versus Brock, then have the Becky match and have Ronda come out after that, because that's hype that you know you don't need to take away from the women's royal rumble match start out with one of the royal rumble matches don't have ronda in it i think it makes the most sense but i do think they're going to go for the ratings pop they're going to go for the espn they're going to go for the cbs sports they're going to go for having it you know put all over these massive platforms and being like oh my god ronda rousey is back so i do think ronda's going to win that one as for the men's match honestly i'm going to stay consistent and say big e i think it just makes the most sense I think WWE realizes that if they get Roman or Brock to win, 
like Brock probably won't be, but like Roman has a risk of reverting back to 2015 le levels of heat where they actually boo him out of the building, not because they don't like his heel persona, but because they don't like him as a wrestler. And I don't think they want to risk that again. I think having him be the runner up once again, as he's done so many times in the career, is just such a good idea here. So I do think that Big E is going to win it. So I think Big E and Ronda are my two picks. I definitely agree with Ronda winning that. Um, as you said, with just the ratings, it would boost. Um, and her being mainstream like that, I think she's definitely going to win the the women's Royal Rumble match. If not, if she for some reason doesn't come back, which I think is a probability at this point, uh, a high probability of that happening, I think it would be. I, I would say Bailey, but I'm sticking with Ronda. It's definitely if she's in the match, she's going to win it. Um, I'm going to go with Brock Lesnar for the men's one though. I think WWE still wants to keep the title on Reigns, and I don't think they want to do a thing where it seems like he's the underdog going into WrestleMania. That's why uh, that's why I had both of them lose their titles because we talked about it on our show a few weeks back. Reigns versus Lesnar doesn't need a title. It doesn't need one. That's why I had uh, Lesnar drop a title to Lashley, and then you set up a triple threat at WrestleMania with Big E and uh, Damian Priest. And that's why I had Reigns drop it to Rollins, and then you're going to set up Rollins versus Owens, and then – you can main event a non-title match at WrestleMania one of the two nights um, because, I mean, this match just doesn't need that title. But I, I do think they're going to have Reigns retain. I think they're going to have Lesnar uh, lose his title. I think Reigns is going to get involved in some way. Uh, I think it's going to be developed throughout the show with Reigns getting involved. And then I think that Lesnar versus Lashley will be probably the second to last match on the card with uh, Rollins versus Reigns as the first to kick off the show. Rain somehow gets involved with that match. Costs Lesnar. Lesnar comes in at number 30 and wins the Rumble. I think that's what we're going to see. But if not, I think it's going to be Big E who wins it. And I, for the same reasons you said, um, it just feels true. And I think they're trying to really just making this legitimate face for the next few years. So I think it's either going to be Brock Lesnar or, or Roman Reigns, whichever loses the title, which I think one of them at least will. Um, I think whoever loses it will win. And then Big E. Um, but we're a few days away from the Royal Rumble. I'm really excited. This this was really fun for me to, I mean, hear what you think is going to happen and how you would do it, and for me to make as well. And I'm sure you had as much fun as I did making this. And we're, yes, sir. We're literally just less than 48 hours away. From oh, I'm paper. getting so excited. It's it's coming soon, and I'm really excited for it. And yeah. as much as I'm hyped up to see it, I'm also very worried of the Ronda stuff, but I'm going to ignore that and really hope it happens how I booked it or how um, so many other people I've seen have booked it. Yeah. And again, we're less than 48 hours from this pay-per-view at the time we're recording, and I really can't wait. I hope you guys all enjoyed hearing our thoughts on this and how we would do it. And before we go, follow TWSN on Instagram and Twitter at TWSN. Subscribe to the TWSN banning Patreon, 50% off. All of January. January is basically over, so cash in while you can. Um, download the TWS and mobile app to access all the content, all the articles, everything uh, that our team of 50 plus create here at TWS and download the TWS and mobile app and subscribe for more. If you like video breakdowns like this, this is a longer one, obviously, but if you like video breakdowns, if you like podcasts every single day, we have them going up. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also give us a like if you like this video and comment on it and comment your thoughts as well. This has been the Off the Top Rope Royal Rumble special. I'm sure we're going to have another one for WrestleMania. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So this has been the Off the Top Rope special. I'm Justin Lester Chelsea. Uh, Justin Lester Chelsea. That's been Matt Blaustein. We're out. Peace. I need this rain, rain, rain for the army. I, 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 baby, I need this rain.